Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Double Sleep. As always, Uma and I are here to go over the latest reveals for Saiyan Showdown. Today we'll be covering uh, Bandai's neglected Child of Green. Um, we'll be going over the both leaders, both the Goku and the Vegeta, uh, both taking place in the Saiyan Saga. Uma, do you want to start us off with Vegeta? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's funny that you say neglected Child because I feel like both of these decks are pretty pretty average compared to some of the other reveals that we've got but you know let uh let everyone else be the judge of that uh once <coughs> these cards come out and we start seeing some some deck lists um so we'll start obviously with the vegeta like you mentioned with the leader auto is a once per turn if it's your opponent's turn when one of your battle cards is removed from your battle area by an opponent's skill your opponent chooses one card in their hand and discards it trying to i guess get back onto the the hand control side of things or like, or like you know light hand control i guess i would say um, activate battle once per turn as well. If your life is less than or equal to your opponent, this card gets 5k power for the battle. So, kind of, I think we saw that on one of the draft box leaders, right? Where if your opponent was on the awakened side, uh, you would get 5k combo. So it was like a it was like a benefit of forcing your opponent to awaken. So then that way you were still swinging at 15k. Um, this is obviously an activate battle once per turn, so it's only a once off, but still. Not a bad effect that we haven't seen since those draft box leaders. Uh, the Awaken, when your life is at three or less or your opponent's leader's card back is facing up, you may draw two cards, choose up to one of your opponent's units and cards, and remove a marker from it, then flip this card over. So again, another way to kind of self-awaken, that's not necessarily when your life is at a certain amount. Um, if you can get your opponent to self-awaken, uh, or even force them to awaken, you'll be able to awaken as well. We've got the Awakened side, Vegeta Destined Confrontation, Auto, when this card attacks, choose up to one of your opponent's Unison cards and remove a marker from it. Additionally, if your opponent doesn't have a Unison marker in play, choose up to one green Great Ape card in your battle area, switch it to active mode and negate its skills for the turn. You'll start to see a, a few Great Apes uh, in, in this reveal and some that will obviously be available already to us. Um, the second Auto, once per turn, if it's your opponent's turn, when one of your battle cards is removed from your battle area by an opponent's skill. Draw one card and your opponent chooses one card in their hand and discards it. So kind of the only other way to really draw from this from this leader, right? You're not swinging to draw a card. It's only when one of your battle cards is removed from the battle area by a skill. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of removal uh, in, in a lot of the decks these days, but it's quite specific um, in ways that you actually get to kind of draw, which I'm not really, not really sure how much of a fan I am uh, for that kind of effect. Yeah, exactly. It definitely. It seems like you can kind of really lock this leader out of drawing. Uh, outside of that draw two on Awaken, you're just mm. not drawing that many cards. Yeah. So uh, I guess we'll go through the other cards and see if there's much uh, much ways to obviously draw extra cards instead of just the leader specifically. Um, we've got a one-cost Vegeta's Powerball extra card, which is a field card. If your leader card is a green Saiyan card, you can activate this card from your hand without paying its energy cost. Uh, auto once per turn, one energy. When one of your non great ape Saiyan cards is KO'd by an attack, you may choose a great ape card that includes the color and character name of the KO'd card and an energy cost of four in your deck. Play in rest mode, then shuffle your deck. So, depending, I guess, you know, what kind of, uh, I guess, if you're playing multicolor or you're playing mono green, some synergy obviously in there, and the fact that you get to play it from your deck as well, um, which is something that we've kind of spoken about. I guess that's another way to kind of keep the card the card count in hand, right? You're not drawing as much anyway, um, but you're also able to play from the deck. Uh, the secondary order at the end of your turn, choose up to one Great Ape card in your battle area and switch it to active mode. Some of the Great Apes that uh, are actually being released will have that blocker uh, skill, so then at least you'll be able to kind of defend on the, on the opposite side. Before we get into any Great Apes, we will go over the one cost Vegeta Elite Resolve. It is a unique permanent if a player has a field extra card in their battle area. This card gains blocker, so it instantly works with the Powerball. As long as you see Powerball, you get to play it for free, uh, as long as you've got a green leader card. Uh, when this card is played from your hand, choose one. Look at the top five cards from the top of your deck. Uh, add up to one green Saiyan card with an energy cost of three or less among them to your hand, then shuffle your deck. Uh, choose up to one Vegeta's Powerball in your deck, add it to your hand, and shuffle your deck. I guess another way to kind of bring out that field card. It's in case you obviously mulligan, you don't see the Vegeta's Powerball, and you do see a Vegeta Elite Resolve. Um, and then this card will obviously gain Blocker once you put that onto the field, so not too bad. 
Good synergy between those two cards. Yeah, and then we've got the two cost Vegeta preparing to invade. It's a unique and blocker. Uh, permanent, if a green field extra card is in your battle area, you can play this card from your hand without paying its energy cost. Again, another free blocker. Um, it is unique, so you can't kind of spam the board with it. We've seen that in the in the Sun Gohan uh, from the Gotenks deck. That as long as you've got a unison card in play, you'll be able to play that for free as well with unique. But now it's kind of relating back to that green field extra card. Um, so this kind of works with both leaders that obviously you'll be going over the, the secondary one, Ryan, after this. But yeah, that kind of works with both. Um, mm. And then we've got the four cost Great Ape Vegeta Embodied Might. Now, this is also a blocker, 20k. Auto limit one green mandatory. When one of your green non Great Ape Vegeta cards with blocker is removed from your battle area by an opponent's skill, you may play this card from your hand. So we've obviously seen two of the Vegetas that have blocker. Um, obviously, if it's removed by a skill, depending on what side your leader is, you'll be able to get them to neg a card, possibly draw a card, but also play this one as well for one mandatory green. The other auto once per turn, when this card attacks, your opponent chooses one card in their hand and discards it. Again, slight uh, hand control types of, types of fields. Uh, activate main for two green. If a player has a field extra card in their battle area, play this card from your hand. So a secondary way to kind of play this card specifically uh, if you don't have those blockers on the field as well. So a two cost blocker, 20k, uh, that can actually untap at the end of the turn once you swing with it. So not... Not too bad. Uh, I wouldn't say anything mm. crash hot, but I mean, it's just a little bit of synergy with the deck itself. Yeah, it's good coverage, I suppose, with this card. Just quickly having the auto on this card if it's removed by a skill, mm. and then having the auto on the field card if it gets KO'd in battle. So, for the one energy, depending on which way your opponent removes this card, um, when, one, when your opponent removes a Vegeta non grade 8 card, you can mm. play this card. Yeah. And you'll be blocking, you know, I guess something to kind of trigger that effect to kind of bring that out as well and force them to force them to take it. Uh, we'll go on to the other cards now. We've got the one cost Nappa. Uh, it is a blocker as well. Switches card to rest mode. When your opponent uses a skill to play a battle card with an energy cost greater than their current energy, they choose one card in their hand or one of their battle cards and place it in its owner's drop area. So we've seen this effect. Uh, where it's a blocker, but you get to kind of choose if you want to block with it or you want to obviously put it to rest mode to, to kind of do something with a card that's being played with a great energy cost. Um, I, I still don't know. I, I'm still not sold on the idea of these one-cost blockers that have an ability when someone plays something that's a higher energy. Not not a big fan of them. I know every color is getting it, obviously with slightly tinkered effects. Um, I mean, this can obviously switch to rest to kind of neg one. It's not the end of the world. Obviously, people pay two for Ribrian at the end of the day. Um, but they can also choose one of their battle cards and place it in the drop area as well. So if they've got a flood on the field, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be able to neg their cards from hand. Uh, two cost Nappa, the Intimidator. It has critical 15k. If your leader card is Vegeta or Nappa card, when this card is played from your hand, your opponent chooses one card in their hand and discards it. Again, it's not too bad. Like I said, people do pay two for Ribrian at the end of the day. Obviously, it gets rid of two cards. Um, but this gives you a 15k critical body on the board on top of getting rid of one card from their hand. So not too bad mm -hmm. in that sense, but nothing kind of crazy crash hot. I see too much crit in green, green. that much these days. Yeah. You had the one drop Gohan that takes a life, but that was almost uh, almost the first one, yeah. Yeah. Um, we've got a one cost Saberman, Unison Sapper. It's got blocker as well, another 4k. Plenty of blockers in this in this green uh, reveal. Permanent. You can include as many copies of this card in your deck as you like. Uh, so it also helps out with the old uh, Nappa leader. Uh, auto. When this card is KO'd, choose up to one of your opponent's unison cards with four or more markers and remove a marker from it. It's okay. Um, mm. You know, most of the time you probably want to keep your opponent's unison at two or three. Um, you're probably already swinging into it anyway. This is kind of just if it gets out of control, you might want to play this, I guess, in the deck. Or like I said, with the Nappa deck, you know, you have the Sabermen that you get to play. So I guess that's one way to kind of look at it, right? Uh, Chiaotzu, one drop. Uh, activate main. Send this card to its owner's warp. Your opponent chooses one of their battle cards. If it's a non-Saiyan card, KO it. Kind of interesting. This is probably like a sideboard card, right? If you're playing against a deck that doesn't really run Saiyans. Um... I mean, apart from that, I don't really know how much play it'll see. Um, again, it's super situational. You really have to go against a deck that literally does not run one Saiyan card. Um, 
you know, because if they just put one body on the board and you play the Chiaotzu, it's like, okay, well, I'm going to choose it. And then the Chiaotzu is kind of done and dusted, right? So I, definitely in the sideboard. I don't think you'd probably see it in the main, but you never know. Um, there's a reason why this card has actually got 38 views, um, mm. <laughs> I would imagine. Yeah, I don't think that I don't think that has a place in the side either. No, well, you know, <laughs> yeah, I guess that's also true, right? We don't know what we're going to see, but I mean, if you're lacking space, there's your card. Uh, we got the super combo. Uh, if your leader card is green and your life is at four or less, when this card is using a combo, draw one. Again, don't know how much this will see play. It does have 10k on it, regardless when you combo with it. But you know, we've got better generic uh, super combos now. Um, pretty stock standard. Uh, vanilla beaters, right? We've got a 20k two cost plain monster, and then we've got the North Kai three cost uh, 30k two mandatory green as well. Um, and the one cost Yajirobe confronting invasion, it's a counter attack. Uh, negate the attack and play this card in rest mode. If the attacking card is a great ape or demon clan battle card, choose it, KO it, and your opponent draws one card. Uh, again, like, I know there's a bit of synergy, Ryan, you're going to go over some of the, uh, the great eight plays that you get to kind of do, um, you know, to your opponent's side and stuff like that. N nothing crash hot again. Like, I don't know. I don't really like this chain that much. I'm, I'm hoping to be proven wrong. I'm hoping there's something there that we're kind of missing, but again, feels really lackluster, uh, in these green reveals. I can't really see any, any kind of chains that, you know, excite me. Um, but I do say that, and then the last card that I want to go into is the only card that I would pretty much say that really excites me from green. When I saw the reveal of this, um, I think it was at Comic-Con or something like that, when they kind of uh, showed it off that it was in the background, um, I thought green was going to be like a killer killer uh, archetype, right? I was like, oh, this is crazy. This is so good. Um, it's King Vegeta, Invasion's Command. It's an SR. Uh, it's got counterattack, Spirit Boost 1. Play this card with three markers on it. So you can literally Demigra turn one. Uh, get this out when your opponent swings for a Spirit Boost one. Um, I mean, I guess, well, you still have to pay the three, but yeah. Um, it's still... With the permanent, it gets reduced by, yeah. by one specified. I was about to say, obviously, with that, during your opponent's turn, if a great ape card is in play in your battle area, reduce the specified cost of this card in your hand by one mandatory green. So it can come down to a two mandatory with three markers on it if you've got another unison in play. Um, it's not going to negate the attack. That's one thing that I obviously want to point out. It just plays the card with three markers on it. Um, it's got a plus one, activate main as well. Choose up to one card in your opponent's hand or one of their battle cards, ignoring barrier and place it into the drop area. That feels like one of the craziest plus ones I've seen on any unison. I mean, in almost... 80% of the situations, you're going to be plus, like, you're going to use the plus one just to kind of, like, KO something on the board, ignoring barrier, right? If you're playing, like, obviously, the other way to play this deck, obviously, with the, um, you know, the hand destruction, you know, the plus one to kind of neg a card in their hand is not too bad, uh, but still, I think it's absolutely insane that it's got that plus one, um, you know, for the, for the removal. Um, and then we've got the, I believe it, it's actually... Uh, broken the image, but I believe it's a plus minus. Um, and then depending on how many markers you remove from the unison, for each marker you remove during, sorry, remove using this skill, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards and KO it. So again, kind of crazy that, you know, it's got a lot of ways to deal with a board. Um, you can get mm. rid of barrier, you can get rid of like swarm. I mean, if you play it with three and then you decide to kind of go neg three, remove three battle cards from the field, regardless of how powerful they are, as long as they don't have barrier. Kind of, kind of insane that they they released a unison like this. I'm not gonna lie; it kind of makes up for obviously some of the some of the green reveals that we don't really don't really rate out there. But I mean, to be able to kind of add this into a, any green deck, any green deck, um, is absolutely insane. The permanent, you know, I mean, you'd probably see it played for three more than more than using the permanent and the spirit boost, but that's fine. I think I think at the end of the day, this is crazy. Uh, absolutely bonkers. Um, and it, it did get the SPR treatment, so a really nice-looking uh, King Vegeta uh, SPR. I can't wait to see the textures. I know I say this on pretty much every SPR that they reveal, but this is gonna, <laughs> this is going to look great. I think I think the artwork is really nice. Um, I kind of like what they're doing with all the gold in there as well, but, yeah, I definitely can't wait to see what it looks like in person. Um, 
in almost a week. We're getting we're getting uh, pre release soon, so I'm really hoping to pack some of that um, when we play our events. But yeah, I'll definitely be chasing a couple of these. That's for sure. Yeah, maybe the SPR over the SR. They kind of butchered the art for the <laughs> SR, in my opinion. Um, wow. Yeah. yeah, not too sure what's going on with King Vegeta's face there. There's a, there's a couple of uh, artworks that are actually been questionable. I'm wondering yeah. if they maybe got like maybe a different designer just for like some of them, or they wanted to give someone a shot, kind of like what they did with the uh, with the anime. But all in all, I think you're absolutely right. I think people are going to be chasing the SPR version just for the sake of it. Um, and that's pretty much it from the Vegeta reveals. Ryan, do you want to take us over the the Goku reveals uh, from Green? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so moving on, we've got Son Goku, uh, auto. This card is placed in your leader area. Activate up to one King Kai's planet from your deck. Um, seeing a lot of these leaders now playing field cards from the get-go, or at least having some kind of way to play them at the beginning of the game. Uh, auto, when this card attacks, draw one. So this leader will be passing one on attack. Awaken, when your life is at four or less, or your opponent's leader, leader's back is facing up, you may switch up to one of your energy to act mode, have this card get plus 5,000 power for the turn, and flip this card over. So no draw two there, not even drawing one there, you're just switching one energy to active mode, which is a bit a bit rough, but uh, getting the plus five. Mm. On your awakened side, Sun Goku, Destin Confrontation. Uh, auto, when this card attacks, draw one, standard, activate main. Send for King Kai's training from under a King Kai's planet in your battle area to the owner's warp. This card gets plus 45,000 power for the turn and minus 15,000 power during the next turn. Uh, activate battle, I will come back to that activate main, but activate battle moving on once per turn. Place one King Kai's training from under a King Kai's planet in your battle area into the owner's drop area. This card gets plus 10,000 power for the battle and minus 10,000 power for the turn. So they're really trying to work in that KO Ken effect in which you're getting this massive boost for, for your turn and, you know, suffering the repercussions of it the following turn. Yeah. Uh, it, minus 15 on your opponent's turn is huge. If you're not winning on that plus 45,000 power, you you're probably power. dead. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's kind of rem reminiscent of the, uh, was it the Baby SCR, Baby Janemba SCR, where... When it got played, your leader got negged uh, twenty or thirty k for the turn, something like that. That one gave that one gave your opponent the choice. They had to either crit three life that's or it. lose minus forty thousand power yeah, or that's something. Right. That's right. Yeah, something um, ridiculous. Yeah, going. I guess obviously plus forty five thousand power is massive. Um, when you start combining that, you know, with I think feet can may may or would work with this card and any critical and things like that and. You know, slapping double strike chamber and things, but even then, like, if you're not able to kill your opponent, they just need to stop that one attack. Yeah. In that minus 15 the following turn, it yeah. is, yeah. Commemorative photo just straight after. Devastating. <laughs> That's what I'd be doing. Just be like, well, <laughs> this is my last choice. <laughs> I don't have anything else. Yeah, it's crazy. Hail Mary. <laughs> um, moving on to the field card that comes out at the beginning of the game um, King Kai's Planet. So, 10 cost. Field, you're pretty much only going to be playing this with the effect off the leader. Can't see anyone paying 10 for this. Uh, field, activate main once per turn. Place up to one King Kai's training from your deck, life, or drop area under this card. Then shuffle any areas you look through with this skill. Activate main once per turn. If there are four King Kai's training under this card, choose one. Choose up to one Sun Goku confronting invasion in your hand and play it. Choose all. Choose all green Sun Goku cards in your leader area and battle area and they get plus 5,000 power for the turn. Or draw one card, choose one card in your hand and place it at the bottom of the deck. So, you know, being able to search through your deck life is huge. You know, knowing what cards you've got in your life, obviously you have to shuffle them when you put it back, but at least you have an idea of what's in there and how much life you need to be taking, things like that. If a card that you need is in there, perhaps you'll be taking more life um, we've seen a lot of wish leaders use this kind of skill in which they can look through their life. And it's definitely having more knowledge in this game is definitely beneficial. Um, yeah, the activate main, giving you a couple of different options mm. um, requiring for King Kai's training, which we'll be going over now. Um, King Kai's training is just a one cost green extra card. Activate main, choose one King Kai's planet in your battle area, place this card under the chosen card, 
add up to one Sun Goku confronting invasion from the deck to your hand, then shuffle your deck. Um, so both the field and this card giving you the option to search out this Sun Goku confronting invasion, which starts off the chain for the deck. Um, so, sorry, not starting off the chain. There is one card before that, which is uh, Training Goals Sun Goku, which is a one cost. Uh, auto, when this card is played, look it up to five cards from the top of your deck. Choose up to one green Sun Goku card with an energy cost of five or less, or one green Unison with a specified cost of two among them. Add it to your hand, shuffle your deck. Activate main, limit one, one green. If there are three or more King Kai's training under a King Kai's planet in your battle area, choose up to one Sun Goku confronting invasion in your deck or warp. Play it on top of this card, then shuffle your deck if you look through it. Again, we're seeing a lot of these one cost cards that search the top five, but now have additional effects added on. Mm. Um, so giving you that option to play this turn one and rather just sitting there as a 4K or 5K that doesn't do anything, now they've got additional effects. Can I say as well, Ryan, before we move on from like the whole Inkai's Planet field card and stuff like that, if you mm. notice as well, and this kind of like I think would catch people off guard right when they first look at it, the activate main once per turn when it says is if there's four King Kai's training under this card, choose one. It it doesn't actually get rid of any of those cards underneath. So as long as it's four there, you get to continuously just, you know, every turn, use it, use it, use it, use it. You know, there's unless your opponent finds a way to obviously get rid of field cards, even the Goku that we're speaking of now, if there's three or more, then you choose up to a Goku confronting invasion, play it on top, then shuffle your deck. So it's it looks like it's really revolving around having those cards under the under the field card but not necessarily getting rid of those cards to activate all these other effects which is kind of interesting as well absolutely and now it does make more sense as to why you can search every area you know if if you've got one stuck in your life now you're able to search it out if your opponent mills it from your deck to your drop area exactly. um, you're able to search it out so they're kind of covering all bases um i don't think there's anything that warps from your deck you know outside of oceanus but obviously you're just not attacking at that point mm. so you're not having to warp the cards but i don't think there's anything that forces you to go from deck to warp that i can think of um so yeah being able to search every area and make sure that you do get every copy of the, that training card mm. underneath the field um, moving on we've got two cost Kerry ken sun goku confronting invasion uh, so this is the card that is mentioned in a lot of these cards unique barrier 15k Activate main limit one for one green. If there are a total of four King Kai's training in your warp and or under a King Kai's planet in your battle area and you send this card to its owner's warp, play up to one Sun Goku maximum gains from your deck, then shuffle your deck. Interesting that this one specifies that if they're in the warp as well, you can use it, yeah. So perhaps if there is some kind of way where your opponent can remove the, the field card and put everything to your warp, you're not locked out of playing the game. Um, Next we have Kerry Ken Son Goku Maximum Gains. Goku's hands look massive in this card. I just want to say, like, I mean, there's a reason why proportionate. <laughs> yeah, in proportionate to his body, they just look uh, huge. It's funny. <laughs> Three cost, uh, 19k, two specified green. This card is played. Draw one card, then choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards. Energy cost of four or less, and KO it. So a bit of removal there. Activate main, limit one, one green. If your opponent has three or more energy and your life is less than or equal to your opponent's, choose up to one Kerken Sun Goku decisive battle in your hand and play it on top of this card. Mm. It seems like this deck kind of revolves around you being at a bit of a disadvantage to your opponent and then trying to come back from there. Mm. Um, you know, your awaken is if your leader's backside's facing up and things yeah. like that, and this card plays if you've got less life kind of revolving around that carry can trying to get you out of a sticky situation mm. uh next we have the sr for the deck the carry can sun goku decisive battle that was just mentioned on the previous card uh five cost three specified green uh and a whole lot of keyword skills on this card so we've got deflect double strike barrier and dual attack uh, we've got an ex evolve for three green if your opponent has three or more energy uh Evolve over a mono green Sun Goku card with an energy cost of two or three. So you're not just having to play it through the chain. There are other options to evolve this card. Uh, when this card is played, choose up to two of your opponent's battle cards, ignoring barrier and KO. Your leader card and Sun Goku cards in your battle area get minus 10,000 power during your opponent's next turn. Auto at the end of the turn, send, at the end of your turn, send this card to its owner's warp. If you do, play up to one Sun Goku confronting invasion from your warp. 
Mm. So again, we're seeing that effect in which if you don't kill your opponent, you're going to get punished for it. You're going to get the minus 10 on your opponent's next turn, and that's across all Son Goku cards, including leader. So you're going to be playing a lot of Son Goku cards, and they're all going to get minus mm. 10. Um, yeah. It's really forcing you to have one big turn in which you go in and you have to kill your opponent there. Which is cool. Like, it's a cool effect, and it's not something that they've done before. I just don't see these cards being played all that much, you know, because there's so many answers to things like that. Yeah. Obviously, this is not deflect and barrier, but if you play this and walk into a baby hatch, let's just say, like, you just get punished immediately from yeah. there. Uh, moving on to some of the other cards in the deck um, that were outside of that chain, we've got one cost Sun Gohan confronting invasion. Walker, if your leader is a green Saiyan card, when this card is KO'd by an opponent's attack, choose up to one of your opponent's unison cards, remove a marker from it, then add up to one card from your life to your hand. Pretty cool effect. Um, some synergy with the Vegeta leader as well. Um, so if this card is removed in battle or by an opponent's mm. skill, mm. Um, being able to play the next card out, which is Sun Gohan Simeon Revenge, a four cost grade eight, um, which has blocker revenge, auto limit one for one green. One of your green non grade eight Sun Gohan youth cards with blocker is removed from your battle area by a skill. You may play this card from your hand. Um, blocker revenge is always good, you know, mm. being able to just remove Anything it gets through barrier, things like that, it almost forces your opponent to have to remove it by skill or put you in a situation where they need to swing with a leader or unison card to try and clear this. Uh, otherwise, if they've got a ch card that requires a chain and things like that, it can just immediately get removed. Yeah, and that also untaps from the Vegeta leader as well. At the end of a turn, you untap a great ape, so that's always going to have kind of the blocker revenge active if your opponent doesn't get rid of it somehow. Yeah, true. Yeah, it gets, gives you the chance to attack with it as well. Yeah. Yep. There's always been a, a bit of a problem with blockers sometimes is, sure, you have these great defensive cards, but if you can't deal damage to your opponent, then, then it's just not it's as good. For a defense, yeah, exactly right. Mm. You're reactive, yeah. Yeah. Uh, next we see the Unison, Krillin Staunch Defender. Uh, two cost, green Unison, auto, once per turn. If your life is at three or less and it's your opponent's turn, when your leader's power is decreased, switch this card to active mode and it gains blocker for the turn. Plus one, activate main, choose one card in your hand and place it at the bottom of the deck. For every two King Kai's training under a King Kai's planet in your battle area, draw one card. Mm. Minus one, activate main, your opponent chooses one card in their hand, discards it. Um, so a couple of different effects there that work really well with this deck, I suppose. So, you know, if you're able to kill your opponent on the, that, big, that big turn and you end up getting the, the minus 10 or from the, use, uh, from the leader or from the battle card, this card at least gains blocker. Yeah. Um, saving you from one attack, I suppose. You know, you're at a zero. You're you'd be at a base power of zero, but at least you have one blocker on the field. Yeah. Um, and you activate main, so you can, this whole deck works with you having four cards under that field card. Um, so being able to plus one and draw two cards is not too bad. Um, and yeah, activate main minus one. Your opponent chooses one card and discards it. Nothing special, but not yeah. too bad. Perfect for green, virtually. Yeah. Uh, North Kai, Master's Guidance, one cost. Choose one King Kai's planet in your battle area. When this card is played, draw one card. Place up to one King Kai's training from your deck or drop area under the chosen card. Shuffle your deck if you look through it. Um, so yeah, you draw one card. Gives you the chance to put one under. Good thing. You can pretty much get two under in a turn by using the fields activate main and then using this card as well. Training Buddy Gregory, one cost. Choose one card in your hand, place it at the bottom of the deck, then place one King Kai's training from under a King Kai's planet in your battle area into the drop area. When this card is played, draw two cards. Activate battle for one green, place this card in the owner's drop area, choose up to one of your Sun Goku cards, and it gets plus 15,000 power for the turn. So once you've got four cards or... Yeah, well, once you've really got the four cards under your... Uh, field card you can play this card choose one put it in the drop area draw the two and then use the field card to pick it up from the drop area and putting it straight back um, but i guess the activate battle on this card is probably a bit more important so on that big turn that you're going in you're able to pay one give your leader or one of your battle cards the extra plus 15 means that you are able to push that damage and kill them on that big turn uh, next we have two costs on gohan rageful flurry 
unique blocker. When one of your green battle cards is KO'd by an opponent's skill, you may play this card from your hand. If you do, this card gets plus 10,000 power for the turn. Not too bad, nothing great. Uh, three cost, Yamcha, Confronting Invasion, Dual Attack, Permanent. If your opponent has six or more battle cards in play, reduce the energy cost of this card in your hand by two. Auto, at the end of your turn, if your opponent has a battle card with an energy cost of one in play in their battle area, place this card in the owner's drop area. I will be surprised if we ever see this card get played. <laughs> <laughs> six or more battle cards in play, and then it becomes a one cost, which is, I mean, a 20k dual attack for one is good, but how often are you going to see your opponent have six or more battle cards? I'm really quite surprised by this card. And when they do have six battle cards on the field, I don't think you want to be playing this anyway. Yeah, yeah I would agree, yeah. It's a strange card. Mm. Um, three cost Piccolo confronting invasion, blocker, counter attack, negate the attack, then play this card. If your leader is a green Sun Goku card and it's your opponent's turn, reduce the energy cost of this card in your hand by one. Um, so yeah, paying it for two, negate the attack, play the blocker. Mm. Um, Almost exactly the same as the negates that we saw in our Battle Evolution, um, except those cards also give you the option to take the life instead of paying two energy, um, and that works for any green leader. Yeah. But I guess there's some synergy, I suppose, with playing this card, and you know there might be other targets that work with the Namekian as well. Uh, last card we have is Raditz requesting reinforcements, one cost blocker. Uh, choose one card in your hand and discard it. When this card is KO'd by an opponent's attack, choose up to one red or green Vegeta or Nappa card with an energy cost of one from the deck, send it to the warp, shuffle your deck, then play that card from your warp at the end of your next turn. So this card will probably work a bit better with the Vegeta leader that we went over, um, being able to play things like the um, Crit Nappa that we went over and some of the Vegeta cards that uh, we played that go into the Great Ape. Um, so being able to play this at the beginning, uh, if your opponent removes it, you have the option to play uh, Great Ape Raditz cards, which we've seen a few of. Uh, also, then being able to, to send a Vegeta or a Nappa from the deck to the warp and playing that. Um, but yeah, other than that, we just have the SPR, which is again the Kaoken Son Goku, um, giving Vegeta a, a belting there. <laughs> um, great artwork. I mean, this is you know the first time that we, the first kind of saga in Dragon Ball Z. Um, one of the more memorable ones that, you know, we kind of remember from being really young, or at least I do, because when I was young, this is kind of when it was beginning. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, great artwork, again, but overall, just a bit of a lackluster reveal from Green, in my opinion, you know, compared to some of the other cards that we've seen in other decks. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what people will make with these cards, if we do see any kind of interesting decks that come out of them with previous support, perhaps some multicolour things like mm, that mm. um but yeah other than that that's that's everything for for our reveals for green um we've pretty much covered all the mono colors for this for this uh, set coming out all that we have left is multicolor mm. so if you are interested in in checking that out you know feel free to subscribe to like the video let us know what your thoughts are um if you are interested in other kind of content that we've been created we might just put up uh recently an unboxing of the reprint set that we had for Rise of the Unison Warrior and Vermilion Bloodlines. So if you're interested in checking out what those cards look like compared to the original artworks, check out that video. You'll find it on our page. Uh, but other than that, Emma, did you have anything else to, to finish up with? No, I pretty much summed it up. Um, obviously, if you haven't liked the Facebook page either, um, that's mm -hmm. where we obviously put most of our uploads first and then we kind of share it around. So if you want to be the first to obviously know, you can hit that YouTube subscribe button. But if you don't have YouTube, then just like the Facebook page at the end of the day, and you'll be notified as soon as the video gets put online. Um, but yeah, perfectly done. Uh, apart from that, yeah, I, I think that's that's pretty much it. We've covered all bases, um, and I guess we'll leave it there, right? Yeah, and we'll see you next time. Take care, guys. Yeah.